when I first heard it, I wanted to see it performed. I'd like to take this moment to thank my mom and my dad. Just like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hey Leslie. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah. I'm good, thanks and you. I'm doing fantastic, Harley. Your studio looks nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have been working so hard at it, eh? So can I tell you a bit about Kicks and Snares? Yeah, sure. Cool. Kicks and Snares is like the show um in which I I'm trying to tell the stories behind the music, you know? Most of the time, mm -hmm. like, we only hear about their song, you know what I mean? And that's the end of the story, you know? There are so many people behind the music, and there's so much, there's so much different stuff that goes on. And for me, as a, as a music producer, I'm just showing love and showing appreciation to the people that have made the songs that I've been part of I'm, I'm, um, to be successful. So I'm, and I'm start with, starting with my catalog. I'm going to go through every song I've ever produced and tell all the stories. And then when that's done, when I run out of content, I'll start working on other people's music and tell their stories if they're too shy to tell them. Oh, that's so cool. That's a dope idea. Yeah, so it's, it starts there. I mean, there's so many other things that I want to do with it. But it, I mean, for me, I'm like the easiest thing, the most obvious thing is to just like uh, play it, go through more, all my music and just show all the stories that we never could tell. So, and the yeah. reason I'm, I'm calling you today is to talk about um, Khatali in a jail. Um, <laughs> in, in the story, the, my, my recollection of it was that um, we made the song with Jane. Eh? It was dope. Mm. And then, uh, then it was dope. And then I got told you to rap on it. Then it was like even doper. And then, then uh, Jabba like co-signed it. And then we went off to, to, uh, to Math Town. To Royal Dopeness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we performed it, came back, and then the Monday when we came back from Math Town, I went to <coughs> an AK at, at uh, YFM. Yeah. You guys were doing the 12 to 3 slot. And, um, you know, then I handed you the CD, and then AK played it. I, I think, I think we're just, I thought we were just previewing it, and next thing it was on air, and then DJ Monday was there, and Clive, and then it was the thing. Now, I was like, wow. Me, amazing. So I wanted to thank you for that, number one. And then secondly, um, and also for, for the role that you're playing in, in, uh, in South African hip hop. Just to acknowledge you and say, hey girl, you're doing your thing. Um, so that you know, um, you know, like sometimes if you're not the most popular kid, then people never hear your story. So I'm, I'm trying to tell your story. And um, through this song and tell me, what your memories are of the song, and um, yeah, I'll take it from there. That's the conversation. Wow. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to get like if you're a woman inside. Um, I think also because I'm in a very funny place in my life or transitional place, so I keep on getting reminded of things, and it's so weird. Sometimes when you've been involved in something, you don't realize that you're part of you know, that you're a part of history. I feel as though when I think about then, when I think about the song, when I think about the role I played in hip hop and essay and so forth, I just, I think that at that point, it was just about like, is it a dope song? Is it gonna change? You know, are people gonna respond to it? You know, and obviously everybody who was on, on the song as well, like it was all heavy, heavy weight. Do you know what I mean? So that added to it. Yeah. And I think also just at that time, we were always willing to just try anything new. I don't think there was ever like a demoing phase. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least not with me. Yeah. Um, it was never a demoing phase. It was always just like, if we liked it, like, put it on, you know. Um, and I think that radio at that time alluded to it because it wasn't about, is this commercially viable or anything like that? It's like, did the streets like it? And the streets liked it. So yeah. we just always, and at least for me, I, I knew I always wanted to just... Um, I just always wanted to, my role specifically on radio was that if the streets were talking about it or bumping like, to the song or whatever the case was, or talking about the producer or the artist, or, you know, if enough people that I respected were talking about it, or even people that I didn't know, because I felt like hip hop was always like this community. And if there was enough of a buzz on the street, yeah. then it's like, it should be on radio. Because I felt like as if that's, that was the role that I played, you know, um, it wasn't to be a, how do I say, like a gatekeeper. 
but it was more like, you know, this is what, what people are enjoying and then this is what's happening in terms of the culture. That's what I wanted to do. So, yeah, I think that that's what it's always been about me, about where I'm concerned. And it was the same for the song. And yeah, just that entire like era was just always about that. It was always about the culture first, you know, and I think that that's what's different from what's happening now. Before it was always about the culture first and now it's almost like, very individualistic but that's not a bad thing i think that um hip-hop um specifically does that all around the, the world it, it's about the people it's about the culture first and then it becomes about individuals really doing well and then like what we're seeing is happening in america everything is going back to like the culture like what are you doing for the people for the culture you know but that's because of what's going on so it's always a rotational kind of situation so yeah at that I was just um, blessed enough to be involved at a time when it was about the culture first, when it was like just this like energy that everywhere you went, like literally every corner. I mean, the other day, not the other day, like last year, I was on my way to KZN, yeah. and um, I was actually in KZN, and then I was leaving, and there was a tornado. It was such a weird story. No, was it this year? It was this year. There was like a tornado. Remember at the beginning of the year where there was that tornado that happened? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. So first of all, going into KZN, I, I didn't know that there was one, you know, it was when I was leaving that everybody said, oh, it looks like the tornado is going to come again. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> so I just had to leave because I was, had to get back to Joburg. And from Joburg, I was going somewhere else. I was leaving the country the next day. I was just like, listen, this is not my portion in life. So I literally <laughs> prayed the whole way. I'm just like, Lord, I need to get on this plane. So I it ended up leaving much earlier than what I did. I was there for like a conference. Um, yeah. I was doing interviews and so forth. I left much earlier. But at the airport, I bumped into somebody and he just started speaking about like hip hop. I was just like, first of all, I looked at him. I was just like, this is weird. And then he started telling me everything he remembered, you know? And yeah. I was just sitting there like thinking, well, this is kind of a weird moment, but it was like a dope moment. I literally was coming from the ATM. So you know what I was thinking first, right? Yeah, yeah. Just like, <laughs> I'm getting what this conversation. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, I feel like um, hip hop has awarded me all of these awesome moments um, and to realize that you're a part of so many different people's life moments that to be honest, 99% of them I can't recollect because I wasn't trying to be part of the moment. I was always just trying to be honest about what I thought. I was always, I had always promised and I'd prayed that, you know, when I went on radio, I literally prayed that I'd be able to do something that was going to impact. I just didn't know that that prayer was going to outlast me. And even after my mom had passed away, um, I remember I prayed and I said, oh, Lord, please make me the it girl in hip hop because my sisters and I grew up listening to hip hop. Yeah. So it was just so weird. I don't know where that came from. And I don't know why God answered that weird prayer, but he was gracious enough to do it. Um, so, yeah. So it's like when I hear this, I mean, like I respect what you do. It, it just it just is so emotional for me because to be honest, because of a lot of things that have happened, I put like an emotional block and I feel as though now, all the layers are being forcefully peeled off. It's like, remember this, remember that. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I remember, I remember. That. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. So thank you. Thank you. And then um, I'll remind me to thank you again for another thing. Um, just quickly, just before I forget, the, what is your favorite memory? Like what, what is your favorite, what is the first, like the first thought when you first heard the song, Khatalina, how did it feel like for you? What, what did you envision? Oh, like, what did you hear? What was the thing for you? When I first heard it, I wanted to see it performed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was just like, and it, it just had this like anthem vibe to it. It's like an anthem. Yeah. You know? And I'm one of those people I love like, you know, like I love all sorts of hip hop, but I like when there's like a, I don't know, like, I, I was just like, I wanted to experience it, like, it filled with people. Because you remember back then, like, when people went to hip-hop events, it was packed. It wasn't like a joke, right? Yeah. So everything was, like, packed to the max. So that's what I wanted. That was my first thought. Because with every song, I always try to be, like, I didn't do it on purpose, but it always, like, would give me a feeling. And I always thought with, with Khatali, and I was like, this would be dope. I want to see it being performed. Amazing. That was the first thing I wanted. <laughs> Listen, so thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, I, I've been reading this amazing book by, well, I'm done now, by Jetson Franklin. I finished about two months ago. Um, it talks about mm. dreams. Like it talks about um, the picture of a butler. And, a, and, a, and a, um, so Joseph, in order for him to, to achieve his dream, he, God had to present a butler 
and a Baker film. I'm trying to find the, the book here on my phone. Um, you know, so I think I feel like in your in 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 um in that in that season, actually in a, in a few seasons of my life, you've either been a butler and a baker. Like a, the the baker is the is, is the one that puts the ingredients together, you know, and then the butler is the one that opens the door. Like in so many ways, you you've been that person, and so really oh really may God like continually bless you and just like may His face shine upon you in such a big way. Um, You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> please don't. This the 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 book is called Believe That You Can by by Jetin Franklin. It's amazing, amazing book. So it talks about that. Like I'm actually it, gonna try cop it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I can send you the the audio version of it. The I, I can send you a link to Audible. So if you don't have Audible, you can get the book for free the first time around. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you now. Now. Um. So I mean. You know, besides besides the music, Leslie, uh, you've played like such a huge role in my life, man. Um, you know, my even my walk with God. When I came to Joburg, I was I was very broken. You know what I mean? I don't know why, mm. but like I, I wasn't I wasn't you know I wasn't together with God, and I was far from. And for some reason, I I I, I had a grace zone with you. You are you are just like on my case as as a friend, you know. And I remember like being in a in a very dark place. Like I was I was in I was in like a dark space. I was like drinking and doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And something within you just made you like wanna say, let's go to church. Let me take you to church. And it wasn't like a bad like let me take you to church, you know? Um, <laughs> like listen. Yeah, you yeah, are- yeah. Like you you'd be so patient and come and fetch me at at the Cube Studios and be like, I'm outside. I'm like, cool, let's go. And then we go to church. And then you even took me to the gym. We went and did Pilates and I ended up like loving Pilates forever. You know, so like your your role in my life has been nothing but blessed, man. Like there's so many seasons where um, I can remember like, you know, you unlocking the door or, or just opening or just showing grace. So that for me, I really appreciate you for that. Oh, thank you. You know, what's so weird. I just, that's so sweet, you know. It means a lot. Sorry, I know I'm at a loss for words today, but I don't know. It's like there's certain people in my life who I have to like really go back in my mind and remember like a start and an end because when they've been such an important part of my life, I feel like they've always been there. I know it's a very weird thing, you know? Yeah. I feel like they've always been there. And so you're one of those people that even as you're speaking about that, I'm just like, oh my gosh. You know, then it's like like starting to come back to me because I feel like equally you've just been such an important person in my life as well. And just seeing your faith grow when at times when I didn't have like faith, I was just like, it's, it's reminded me, you know, who God is. So just thank you so much, you know, yeah. like equally. Yeah. I mean, I, I just remember, I think actually the first time, not I think, but the first time I heard about you was with the Silver Dope, Harambe Dope session. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the first time. <laughs> I was just like, what is 37 MBH? Like, what is it? Is it a song? <laughs> I was like, this is dope, but it's like, what is it? Do you know? I still, and I think that. Sorry. No, continue. I still have those records in my archives. Um, Listen, are, if you can share it with me, oh yeah, I would love it. Oh, because yeah. the crazy thing is like, I mean, the way that whole um, thing had played out and all of that and people voting and then we had to sit through the final selection as Harambe and everything. Yeah. In my mind, I was just like, I was an executive producer and nobody told me. Because <laughs> 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 I was like, I was in uni when all of that happened, right? Yeah. Was, everything was like a vibe and then now I'm like, oh, snap, I was an executive producer. So I'm like, go check my executive producer all the tab harambic dope sessions. Oh yeah, that's Ooh. your <laughs> drops my poop. You know? It's like what's your because that was such a like a pivotal moment in SA hip hop. It was such a pivotal yeah. moment. Yeah. And then there was Gapa versus Josie when you first that's where I first met you guys properly. Yeah, listen, that was that I that was just one of the worst trips of my life. But yeah. When yeah. the event happened it was dope. The yeah. getting everybody there, the getting everybody oh, out, God. the people pulling out money, all of that stuff was not okay. And you remember, I was the only girl that had traveled and it was just like stopping the guys from doing crazy things only because we had to leave and we didn't have flight tickets. Oh my gosh. That, you, that event, everybody goes, up. Oh, it was so amazing. I'm just like, 
Huh? I remember that it was dope, but I was like, huh? Like literally it was like a blur. I can see it in my head, but I just remember the drama around it and that, that, pit of, that feeling in my tummy where I just thought, we've got all these people out here and they're going to be stuck in Cape Town and they're not going to be able to leave and where am I going to get the money for people's accommodation? Literally. And I'm like in uni, I'm just like, what the heck am I doing? I'm like, and now my dad is going to know that I have another life. <laughs> There was so much happening. There was so much happening. It was emotionally a lot, but I know it was a dope event because everybody's like, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, it was dope. I'm just like, I ain't going back there. Like, wild horses couldn't make me do that again. Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. You know, speaking of that, like, I, I, you know, the reason I became 37 MPH was to hide the fact that I had another life besides my studies during that time. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> to my world. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, thank you so much, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Jay. Sure. No, thank you so much, my friend. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just... Stay on, safe. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm just on this path of... I, I need to have this... Um, my show, this Kicks and Snares, must just open doors for producers, for everybody that's in the background. You know what I mean? Because, like, no one really takes care of them. No one, like, you know... For me, it's a burden. Like, so I prayed about it a year, two years ago. And mm-hmm. I, I, I was telling my friends and they'd be like, you know what, you're a burden, bro. You need to find a solution for it, you know? So I started praying about it. And last year, something really hectic happened in my life, uh, financially. And then I was like, and it actually, for the first time in the history of my life, you know, I actually zoned in. I was like, okay, cool, who's God? You know, like proper, proper, properly. And God showed me so many solutions. And, and, and me starting the show is like me coming out of my shell in a way and, and actually just stepping up and saying, this is, what I, this is what I would like to see in my life. This is what I like to see in other people's lives, you know? So, so it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting what's happening in my heart. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. I feel as though that that's what, I mean, that's what life is about. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Sometimes it's, it's in our, I mean, I think it's J.K. Rowling that says rock bottom becomes a launching pad for the next chapter in our lives. Yeah. I added the end part, but she said becomes a launching pad and then she just said something else, I can't remember. Oh, but wow. it is about that. I've found that every single time that there's been like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do. It's when, yeah. you know, and that's sometimes when God speaks to us the clearest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. How's Ghana? When I first came to Ghana in 2007, yeah. I'm not even joking. It was for MC Africa. Yeah. And it was December 2007. And I had no idea what to expect. And literally when I landed, I literally said to God, I'm like, wow, you're here. Like I felt God's presence so tangibly. And when I got back, my dad was like, oh, how was it? I'm like, daddy, it's like Uganda, but like a different version of Uganda. I'm like, it's just like home. And Ghana has always been one of my favorite places. It, it like hit my heart, like it captured my heart. That's amazing. You know, it captured my heart. It, and because I traveled to so many places, I don't often remember my first emotion of how I felt when I landed, you know, but with Ghana, I remember it so clearly, like so, so clear. It's crazy. So I feel like God wants me here for a reason. And just even the things that God is doing, the interesting doors, God's opening, Above that, like my, my, my feeling of peace that I've not had in a very long time. Do you know what I mean? And the way I ended up here is just so random. Yeah. Um, and now I'm here. <laughs> I came here for a week yeah. and I've been here ever since with a week's worth of clothes. So just think oh, about wow. that. Wow. Yeah. I'm a so I, there was no plans. Was... What? Uh? That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, with, for a week's worth of clothes and I only had... Um, Two pairs of sneakers, one like pair of like uh, sandals, um, and then three pairs of heels. Now I know that that sounds like a lot, but it's actually not a lot, especially because of the weather. It's like a sandal culture, and because I was only here for like a week, yeah. I didn't expect to. And I only had two pairs of sneakers because I was I went to Cape Town first for Fashion Week and then had to go. So I was wearing different. You know, I love my athleisure wear, so yeah. I had to wear different colored sneakers for the athleisure wear. Yeah. To get into Ghana and then to get into Cape Town. See what I mean? So I didn't want to wash the stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's the reason why I had two pairs of sneakers. And then I had the other shoes. I'm like, oh, just in case, just in case. For one, it was for Cape Town Fashion Week. 
And then the other two was like, just in case I had to do anything while I was here. And now I'm here. Today, I literally had to go and buy new sandals. And I just had to accept. I was just like, I just surrendered. <laughs> wow. Wow. Speaking of sneakers, what are, what's your favorite sneaker at the moment? I don't actually know. What do you, you think? You know, I think of things in colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, got you. I got you. Do, you, do you know the Grand Hills by Fila? I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed with that shoe at the moment. No, I'm going to actually Google it now. It's the, the Grand Hills, the, yeah? Yeah, it's the Grand Hills, the Tupac one, where Tupac is sitting there. It reminds me so much of, of like... I'm Googling yeah. it right now. Are you Googling it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of like 1995, 1996, you know, like... When I was falling in love with hip hop, like properly, I was like, "Wow, this is so cool, man!" And uh, you know, that's um, that's when I look at the Grand Hills, I think of that. I'm just obsessed. I'm like at that place. I'm like, Ooh, those shoes, they remind me of that. Okay, yeah, but I but I see why you're obsessed with it. These are exactly you. They're so you. Really? Yeah, yeah. What? I see why you're obsessed with it. The Grand Hill feeler, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's you. Yeah, right? Yeah, my friend, these are, I feel like this is you. It's like your, uh, I mean, I feel like this is you. It's not so, me, but it's you. I'm so obsessed. I'm like, I keep Googling. I'm like, oh, man, oh, it's so nice. Oh. Yeah, okay, cool. I think yeah. you just confirmed it. Yeah, no, it's so you. I mean, can I be honest for you, for me? Like, I feel like my whole life, and I guess because of what's happening now, yeah, I kind of think of, I mean, I, there's this masterclass that I do and um, Anna Wintour in the one class said about how culture always plays in, and in terms of like fashion and so forth, always has to play its part in what's going on in terms of society. It yeah. can't be outside of it. And so she yeah. went through like Vogue and this happened with Vogue and this cover was about this. And, you know, she really went into the, the pol- social political time of each cover. So there was so much more than what people thought. And it's so crazy because I never thought that I was somebody who was easily swayed either way. But I feel like in the last um, three, like four years and so forth, I've just suddenly become so like freaking loyal to Nike. Wow. Just because I'm like, what they stand for, like I'm about that, you know? Yeah, when yeah. I think of what happened with Colin Kaepernick, I'm like, I'm about that because that means justice and it means this. And I've never been, so I actually... Um, with, like when I go, like I now make it, and you know, I was like Adidas all the way, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was like Adidas and everything. And you know, I used to love all of the sneakers like Adidas, Puma, the this, the hybrid, the, all of them, like everything. Yeah, and, and now it's like all I buy is Nike. Yeah, look, even like when a friend of mine had traveled, and you know, they were like, Oh, I'm gonna get you sneakers, which one, and they just send me the Nike catalog. And I didn't realize what had actually happened. I'm like, that's what it was. It was actually Nike. So I, I was so like impressed with myself that I've moved, I've been so moved by social cause and then hearing what happened with, with Serena and then, and then like, I'm all about that. Like I'm all about like, yeah, I'm all about things that are making, uh, making sense and making a statement. So for me, if there's like a hot new pair of kicks and it's Nike, I more likely than not, I'll just buy it. Right. Like the two that I have now are Nike. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> But but I deal with Nike in colors. <laughs> Just like, yo, do you have this color? <laughs> I know all the sneakerheads are going to be like, oh, that is not the way. I'm like, listen, my life happens in colors. Color. It always has. Color. And you know me. I've always, like, I dream in color. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like J. Cole says he dreams lucid. That's me. Like, yeah. I think of things in color. So when I think of it, I'm just like, ooh, I could get a pair in that color. And when I see the color, it's like, I'm gone. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Remember the time? Remember the time we had the same shoe? I had like we had similar Nikes. Well, exactly the same. Uh, I think it was the Zoom Pegasus at some point. Yes. The, when you sent me a pic, you were like, "Oh, you have them." I'm like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I still run in, in, in Nike. Uh, like look, even now, this time of day. You know. Yeah. But you know, it's so crazy. Um, yeah. I'm going to continue eating my, 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 my monkey nuts. That's all good. Thank you so much for your time, Leslie. No, thank you. And I wish you all the best of luck. And I feel that what you're doing now is so dope. Yeah. Because I think that the world doesn't know what's going to be happening next. Yes. And, and I think that we're going back to a time in our lives 
where it's not just like about a hit and what's going to move a club. It's about like dope ass music. It's about stories. So yeah. you're probably right in season. So you should thank God if you reveal something to you ahead of time. No, definitely. Like definitely. <laughs> Connecting people and just like telling stories. For me, I'm so passionate. 100%. Yeah. Thank you so much. Eh? Cool, my friend. Thank you so Have much. a good evening. You too. Chatelin, that joke. Yo, you. listen. Yeah. I was low-key scared to say that because I just had like a, you know, in Ghana they speak tree. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just, I'm literally trying to like filter through all the languages that I know in my head. So, you know, there's like the Spanish bit, whatever, yeah. the French, which is now like out the window. My Spanish is also like just being weaker and weaker. <laughs> Luganda, Swahili, like the little that I know. The, like, it's a, so like now I literally have to shift my mind and just be like, no, that's the wrong language. So it was, I was like having a hard time at the beginning of the interview. I'm like, Lizzie, how do you say it again? I'm like, that's it. That's it. That's funny. <laughs> that's classic. No, I have to speak the truth. It's like, it's so crazy. When you're somewhere else, you start to speak like other people and, you know, the way that they put their, their, out their letters together and all of that. That's what I've been doing. And I was sitting in a meeting with some people. They said, oh, you actually sound really Ghanaian. You know, I mean, now when we're talking, I don't. But then they were saying that I sound really Ghanaian. So I'm just like, yeah, because I have to acclimatize. So when yeah. I'm speaking to my friends, like if I'm, whatever country I'm in, I always like to like fit in. So now it's just like, I'm just like, I can say it again. But I sound like. That sounded so dope. I'd like to take this moment to thank my mom and my dad. Just like, thank your Lord. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Cool. Take care. <laughs> Bye. That's our intro. <laughs> 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 MPK.